Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2017 Ram 2500 heavy duty truck. This truck has a vibration. The shop has already removed all the tires, balanced them, and we still have a vibration. So we're here to diagnose the vehicle so we can find where the vibration is emitting from. In order to do this, we're going to use the Intelligent Vibration Analyzer, the IVA. The IVA is revolutionary. It uses four accelerometers, one at each corner of the wheel, so we put it on each corner of the suspension. That way, when any of the suspension moves, we read it. These are smart sensor or the control where we read X, Y, and Z off of one cable, which is really unusual. Normally you would need a 12 channel scope, but with a smart system you only need four cables and we go into our IVA interface box. The, that interface box is the oscilloscope and the vehicle communication interface so we can get data off of the car for the RPM of the engine and the VSS or the vehicle speed. Now once we get this connected we're going to go drive it and we're going to be able to quickly diagnose where this vibration is coming from. The first thing we need to do is to get the accelerometers put onto the suspension. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. We've got all the vibration sensors on each corner of this Ram truck. So now it's time to set up the software. It's going to be very simple. Basically I just need a couple of entries. The first entry is going to be the tire. I've gone out and I've looked at all four tires. They're all the same size, 275, 70, R18. That gives me 104.17 inches of circumference. Now the machine is going to get the VSS from the, from the onboard computer system. When I know how fast this vehicle is going and I know the diameter of the tire, we know how many times the tire went around per second and that will be calculated in hertz by the IVA. The next thing I need to do is set up the suspension. This is a four wheel drive. I'm using four vibration sensors and we're on wheel and suspension. I need to know the ring and pinion, but I'm not sure what it is for this vehicle, so I'm going to let the machine calculate it for me. Now all we got to do is get on a highway and we slowly approach 60 miles an hour, light throttle, and the machine will give me a calculation for the rear end, and then the machine will start to calculate what the problem is. So we can try to figure out where this vibration is, what tire, what front end, rear end, what prop shaft. Whatever it is, the machine will help us get there. So let's get up on the highway and go for a ride. Okay guys, we're out on the highway. We're going the speed around uh, the 60 mile an hour mark where we can do this. I can feel the vibration. It's very rapid. It feels more like a drive shaft problem to me. drive shaft in the rear has a 109, 110. We can see the rear drive shafts lighting up. So the rear drive shaft is the vibration. We can clearly see it here guys. So now what we need to do is we're going to change the sensor's location, one in the front and one in the rear, so we can figure out where that vibration is coming from the front of the rear of the shaft. So uh, let's go ahead and take care of that and then we'll, we'll get another drive here. I've moved the left front vibration sensor to the transfer case of this vehicle. The transfer case is aluminum so I'm using a C-clamp to hold the vibration sensor to the transfer case with. I've moved the right front vibration sensor to the rear differential housing. We've moved the front vibration sensors off of the front end. So the left front sensor we moved to the transfer case. The right front sensor we moved to the differential housing. Now we need to change the program. So what we want to do is we want to go to setup and in order to do this we need to stop the program so we can make changes here. I'm going to pick vibration 2, rear drive shaft. 
Now we're going to go ahead and start this to run. And now we see the program came up in a different configuration where we're comparing sensor one on the transfer case to sensor two on the rear differential. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to show us which one of these has the greatest amplitude. This will give us the ability to figure out where the vibration is being emitted from, whether it's in the rear or the front of the shaft. Now all we got to do is drive the car. Okay, so we're on the road. We can see that the rear shaft is doing 100, 200, where the front is only 21, 223 on the rear. So this problem is on the rear of the housing. Do you see how this is 226 and the front is 14? So the rear is the problem. So whatever's going on, it's in the rear of this, whether it's in the differential or whether it's a U-joint, it's back in the back here. So what we need to do now is we need to go back to the shop and check this vehicle. I'll see you there. We're off of our test drive in this Ram 2500 truck. The IVA has indicated that the vibration is being emitted from either this housing and this ring, the pinion, because it's turning at drive shaft revolution, or it's somehow in the drive shaft. When we raise the car up, I can already see what the problem is. Do you see that joint's moving? That, that U-joint is blown out. That U-joint is no good. So this is a real easy repair. We're going to put a U-joint in it, and this vehicle is going to be ready to return to the customer. The point of this whole thing is, is sometimes it's really difficult to find vibrations, and this is a four-wheel drive car. This has two prop shafts in it, one in the rear, one in the front. It has four U-joints. It also has two pinions, and the pinion is rotating at the same speed as the shaft. So we also have a mechanism, which is the transfer case, to transfer this power that's also rotating at this speed. So as soon as I drove the car, I could tell it's not the tire, that it's a higher vibrational frequency, which would be related to a drive line. But which drive line? Which joint? In five minutes, I put this IVA system on this car. I went and test drove it. I know what I'm looking for so I don't waste time. I'm zeroed in on the area of the vibration so I can quickly find it and then we can get it repaired. If you want to do vibrations and you want to be efficient and you want to be accurate, you're going to need better tooling. When you use the IVA, you too will have good troubleshooting in your base.